but you, but it, let's say you even get along with someone, you got a cute girl up there or a good looking guy or, or whatever, and they're like, oh, I can't, can I grab something? You say, you know what, I would love to, but we can't do it. Nine times out of ten, that person will still buy that shirt because they want to support. So not only do they support you financially and able to put some more money into your gas tank, but then they respect your art, they respect what you're doing a little bit more, and you're not giving it away like everybody else on the corner. So it's always good to know your value and know your worth. So I wanted to ask you too, um, now you've got a few years with, uh, with this company um, under your belt, mm -hmm. you've been everywhere. Yeah, I've been. You've done a lot of stuff. Uh, what's you know what's what's some what's something that you that sticks out in your mind like right now? Uh, earlier this year, I was in Germany with uh, Walk Off. The, uh, Who which, is? Which is uh, a band that uh, had a, a cover song on YouTube that just went viral like nobody's business. Within two weeks of that, they were on the Ellen Show, and then they got signed, and they went from your everyday local band uh, playing at uh, boys and girls clubs and local shows to uh, playing in Germany in, Ger in, in front of thousands yeah. we hit up the German version of the David Letterman show Good Morning Germany the, the, we, 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 we hit up 30 million households in one week of a promotional tour it's great. Uh, we, we did one show out there it was originally booked at a venue that held 215 or 250 people. This is the band that does the, the one guitar. Yeah, five people, one guitar. Uh, it was a Go Chase song called right. Buddy that I used to know. That's right. And uh, that that show sold out in, I think, 15 minutes. And then we then it was changed to a venue of eight or 900. And that was sold out within a few hours. It's crazy, man. and it was something to uh, to be a part of. That was which special, was very very special. Uh, the band was uh, going through a lot of grown changes. A lot of a lot of the decisions they had to make. Uh, normal regular bands who are going through this process, uh, they they didn't have management. They didn't have like they, they had everything that you and I ever had, which was zero. Yeah. And literally over everything going for him, but w w within no structure it, in place. Yeah, and within three days, they went from having have having uh, management. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they they went from uh, having management to having a, a a record label war over them. It's crazy. And, over a cover song. Yeah, and then. And then once they signed uh, w with their label, uh, they had the pressure of, I know you've never written a hit song, now I want you to write a hit album. No pressure, <laughs> yeah. but we're sinking a whole lot of money into you. Yeah. So, and it better be friggin' good, yeah. but no pressure. Yeah, that's so, it. and with literally hours and days, that pressure went from, you know what, we, we hope we could do something to, this is happening. And, yeah. and the, this is more real than real. Yeah. And the it, noose is tied, the loaded shotguns all set up, getting yeah. ready for failure. Yeah, yeah. It sucks, man. It uh, sucks. I can't believe the pressure that would uh, that would coincide with something like that. Yeah. It's just nuts. And uh, I, I, I've been watching them all summer. They've been touring the world. They've been, uh, been fantastic. And from what I hear from, uh, from my sources is that they've been able to take everything in stride and the pressure for them is to get that album out. They didn't have an album ready. It was it was just a song they put out for the fun of it. Yeah. Right? It wasn't like this a single a part of a song. It was nothing. It was just like a viral YouTube hit. Yeah, yeah, and and the pressure was was uh was unreal. Uh I never wish that that sort of pressure uh amongst my worst enemy even because it yeah. it's it was just unreal. And it's great to see that they've been able to a stay together as a unit. And uh, B continue doing what they're doing and expand on the original idea to make their shows more fun. That they, they they have uh, they've been getting endorsements by different musical companies, uh, ukulele companies, so they can like give ukuleles away and, and different shakers and 
and their their live show is really about bringing everybody together and they've been able to do that and cool. uh yeah really it's, cool. it's been amazing to see let me ask you you ever been to japan yet not yet not yet not yet do you know what a cat brothel is no it's the weirdest little thing um it's like it's like fun kooky quirky weird like like travolta and hairspray weird, yeah, yeah you know um it's but it's like a cat brothel is uh it's a bar yeah in japan where you pay a nominal fee an entrance fee to get in and you drink a cup of tea and essentially you're renting out time to seek companionship with cats you pet these cats these cats they let these it's a petting zoo for cats and uh these people they drink tea and they just pet cats and this is like the biggest craze right now in japan <laughs> cat brothels uh, it's cat, crazy, eh? Cats are, are a fun animal to have. Yeah, they're loving. Uh, they, they're very loving. But on their terms, that, though. That, yeah, on their terms. Yeah. Uh, I've owned a few. Yeah, they're, they're yeah I got three at home, so. Yeah, I, I had one named Pizza once. It was <laughs> nice. amazing. Nice. I love that cat. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just uh, just a little thing I wanted yeah, to uh, I, throw your way. Thanks. Uh, I'm always <laughs> cat here. Brothel. Uh, Check I'm, it out. I'm like a sponge, just like Brian Mello, right? You guys <laughs> yeah. sponge it in. Yeah, I know. Cat it was, brothel. It was pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Thanks a lot for hooking that up too, by the way. Oh no uh, problem. Brian Mel is a really interesting cat. He, uh, no <laughs> fun intended. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's pretty awesome. Seemed really down to earth and just uh, having having a guy like him on the show, uh, being able to explain to others, you know, what the perception is of a Canadian idol. Mm -hmm. We were talking outside too and stuff. We won't go into that, but yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, no, uh, he seems very interesting guy. He, yeah, he he's always been a class act. Yeah. So I, I've been fortunate enough to have known Brian since his high school days. Cool. And, so you uh, got to see it all happen. I, 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 I was very fortunate, too. And uh, his the guitar player of his band, Stoked, is now my business partner for Emission Touring. Cool. So And it's, uh, it's, it's been great to uh, have an outsider's view of what, what both of them went, went through as yeah. that process happened. So Let me know uh, what's coming up right now for you. Like what's on what's what's on Ace's calendar? Hmm. Well, we we got a, a lot of potential stuff coming up. Uh, for emission touring, we're getting ready to go uh, tour the world or nor North America with uh, Children's Plays, mm -hmm. Strawberry Shortcake. Cool. Uh, pays the bills, man. It pays the bills. Uh, the backyard agains. Mm -hmm. To be in Binu. So all <laughs> all the treehouse stuff. Nice. But, uh, you know, entertainment comes in all forms, not just rock bands. That's it, man. That's uh, it. We're waiting on some big news on, on a few other things. I don't want to... No, but, no uh, sense in doing that. Yeah, no, but uh, we've got... Loose uh, lips sink ships, man. Exactly. But uh, we've been working tight with an up-and-coming band named Harlan Pepper, mm -hmm. uh, who's on Six Shooter Records. Uh, they're young group of guys and who just turned 20 and they're enjoying the new rock and roll life they're a, a, a folky band but uh they, they know how to party for a bunch of young guys so it's it's fun and uh now what you just told me i'm i'm envious <laughs> i'm envious because the life that we live and that we led you know trying to pave our own path you know in this crazy crazy business um you know, you want something bad enough, you go out and get it. You know, what I mean? yes, that's, that's how it is. It's like you don't expect anybody to give you anything. You don't expect to receive, uh, just like that. You know, and uh, it always boggled my mind. Twenty something years old, nineteen years old bands that are doing stuff, and off the hop, they're doing stuff right. You know what I mean? Like it just seems to me like, even like I don't categorize the stuff that they did in high school as like experience that's that's fun that's you know yeah. that's that's just something that they're doing with their buddies that's i mean but now you know i've always thought of like you know when we were younger not not to show you too much yeah man. but like when we were younger you know it's like there was there was guitar players the virtual guitar players mm -hmm. you know the yeah those the, crazy the, the, guys the, the, right the shredding dudes they played in bands with other virtual virtuoso players yeah you know and uh you know so the guitar player was with a virtuoso drummer you know a drummer that was like yeah they, they, you know 
they, they played together so they could push each other's playing ability. Yeah, and they always had a singer that was like up, you know, who could hit the same notes that the guitar player could. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, every single guitar player, you know, in especially like specifically heavy metal, every guitar player is like in most metal um, yeah. platforms. They're they're virtuoso guitar players themselves, but they're playing with guys that have the groove. They're playing with guys that fall into the pocket and they're playing all this stuff. So it's like when we were younger, we had Black Sabbath, Thin Lizzy, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, all this stuff that mm -hmm. was like classic rock to rock and roll to heavy metal. You know, I mean, as as far as I can remember, you know, the best guitar player I could remember next to like John Petrucci was uh, Jeff Hanneman from Slayer, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like you get you get guys like that playing with Kerry King, who's a great writer, he's a great riff writer and stuff, mm -hmm. but he's not, you know, yeah, he, he, he's not the best, you know, in, yeah, in, in he, solo he, form, he, right? So, Kerry King, maybe not the best technical player that's out right, there, yeah. but but he's solid at what he does. Oh, exactly. But, and But nowadays, with the internet, uh, the world has opened up so much, because when we, when we were starting out, let's face it, the internet wasn't around. No. Right? And all you had was you and your circle of peers and buddies to, to push each other now you've got uh different guitar forums online who where all these guitar geek guys go and these shred shredders go to push each other and they, they don't even need to leave their bedroom these days no they so 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 they sit there and like oh the guy in uh maryland what what a great player i want to learn what he does and then within a few emails you get on a skype conversation then you're able to sit there and talk about technique yep. and, and everything else. It's amazing. One, one of the first bands uh, that took to really helped me progress as my tour management as, as well as my sound skills was Threat Signal, who was, uh, who was one of the first bands to really make a, or metal bands, to, to, to get an internet push. Before their real band, uh, there, there's two guys, three guys writing a couple songs, Put up on GarageBand.com, uh, and it it hit number one. It was up there for a long time. They they got ma they had a uh, management signed before the first show was even played, and and uh -huh. and a record deal uh, with Nuclear Blast soon followed. That's right. And uh, and then millions of hits on YouTube. And millions of hit uh, hits on YouTube, and uh, what what had happened there was uh, they they. Once that happened, they went on their first tour. It was great, and then it was time to hit the van. Some of the guys, some of the guys weren't into doing the whole van thing, uh, because they they were comfortable being at home. So because the original lineup was su such a fantastic uh, uh, pl players, and the the drums on the original uh, demos that they're all pro tooled and all digital drums, so they could do whatever they want. Yeah. And then they had to find guys to play this stuff, which yeah. was was difficult. And then what they came into the problem that was their stuff became so technical that they couldn't get the dude down the street to play it. So, they got in contact with Fear Factory, right? Like, how did that work? Uh, from my understanding, they had a mutual friend that. Uh, that put him in touch with Christian Ol 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 Wobblers. I can never pronounce the last name right, but yeah. f fantastic guy nonetheless. Uh, and when they released their first album, uh, or when they went to record their first album, they went down to uh, L.A. To, to record with, with with Christian of Fear Factory. Mm -hmm. And uh, Free being one of the main influences in, of Threat Signal at the time in their high school days and all that, I, I, I know it was a dr dream for them, yeah. and later on they became personal friends with them, and they've they've done a, a couple of uh, side projects with each other, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to to tour with one of the you side projects. Them. Yeah, a, a band called Archaea, mm -hmm. which uh, consists of John Howard, and Pat from Threat Signal, and then Christian and Raymond Herrera, the drummer of Fear Factory. Like yeah. to to me, that's a, a pretty powerful technical lineup. Yeah, and we, and we did uh, a really great tour, uh, tour with Kitty, mm -hmm. and you know what? It, it was a great learning experience, and it was uh, for me being able to work with guys with that, like, that, that sort caliber. of a, that caliber yeah. of playing and and professionalism was a learning experience for, for me, and it was 
uh, it, was, it was a great time. Yeah, it's awesome, man. So, but but later back to the internet stuff is when they started recruiting players because the original players didn't want to do the the road thing. Uh, they turned to the internet and turned to these guitar forums uh, to find the best players that they could. Wow. And and they continue to do so uh, because some, some sometimes the guys like a John loves to tour. John is a road dog. Yeah. He could be if he if he was able to. Uh, he would be out there twelve months a year, and uh, That's a dream, he, yeah, it, it really is. And he doesn't care if he's sleeping in a van or if he's uh, sitting in a hotel room, as long as he's out performing in front of people. Same guy. Yeah, same guy. And uh, but unfortunately, sometimes the members uh, don't think like that. You know yeah, I mean? no, I know, so, I know. It's 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 always tough, man. It's always tough. Uh, the most important things, I think, is that dedication. You know, it's almost even before talent. You know, before before anything else, it's got to be dedication. You yeah. got to be dedicated. And if you can put that dedication in somebody with talent, I mean, you got the perfect uh, coupling yeah. of like, yeah, you know, the right the right recipe. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we could get John on the show too sometime. Yeah, It'd yeah. Be cool to talk I hope to him so. about some stuff. Um, anything else in in the future coming up uh, that you care to talk about? Uh, going to be doing a cross Canada tour with Blackie and the Rodeo Kings featuring uh, Tom Wilson of the 90s band uh, Junk House cool so we're looking forward to that I played pool with them one time in Montreal uh, that was pretty cool 96 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Tom is uh, a fantastic guy he's a bigger than life dude 6 foot 5 6 foot 6 he's just a monster of a dude with a booming voice and uh yeah, he's just a ball of energy, and uh, our son uh, is uh, the bass player in Harlem Pepper. Cool. So, so it's been it's been great working with the Wilson family on a number of different projects. So, awesome, man. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and uh, yeah, that 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 about wraps up about what's coming up. But uh, that cool. I, that I can speak of now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. And well, hopefully we'll be able to uh, unleash some some special news uh, in a couple weeks. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, Care to take us a tour? Give us a tour about the whole building. We're in the Sonic Onion building here, the Sonic Onion Records in Hamilton, and uh, the Missions Touring is on the third floor here. Yeah. And uh, so we're gonna just take a little wick, wisp around here and uh, try and uh, is whisper word? Is whisper yeah. word? I think so. It is. If you're yeah. Right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna wisp. <laughs> we're gonna whisk around uh, around this place too. So um, this building is full of history. So awesome. we can't wait to see it. Yeah. Ace. My Hello. brother. Love you, man. Right back at you. Thank you. This time I'm not fucking tripping. Yeah, I'm not tripping. Tripping over balls here. Alright, so uh yeah, just uh let us know who you are again right. and you're gonna take us uh, through a tour. Yeah, I'm Ace Piva of uh of Emission Touring. We're here at the Sonic Onion uh building. Right now we're in uh the management office of fuck what the hell is this <laughs> edit uh, what the hell is this place called uh, okay we're with these guys every day <laughs> I think there's a sign on that <laughs> I kind of hope that goes out there <laughs> we'll have music on this so yeah. all that Dude. yeah H hidden pony records maybe it's over there Garbage shit. It's two tour laminates. If I can get a little those. A little fozzy. Motorhead. Stage manager, Canadian Music Week. And uh Tiger Cat game. <laughs> uh that's it. Orbital Media, Washings. We have a textile studio. All sorts of stuff going on in the Sonic Onion building. Advertising agency. 
emission touring. That's the one I want. <laughs> I'm just gonna crop it real nice. Sonic onion stuff. Maybe we can go outside real quick and just shoot the sign. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't close the door up there. Oh, that's fine. I'll, I'll run up and grab it. You know, all these posters are get wool style. That was that's amazing. 